There are many promises God has given us in his word. We love them because they are for our benefit. And so when you think about all these promises, I could ask you, do you have a favorite one? More than likely, you would say, I do. But there's one promise that is the most difficult of all, the one we have the most problem with, and that is any promise that has to do with healing, probably because we've had disappointments, or maybe because deep down inside of us, we don't really believe it. Or maybe we're just ignorant of what the Bible teaches about healing. We've seen exaggerations. We've heard about them. We've seen people who have claimed to be healed, and then the next thing you know, they're right back where they were before. So lots and lots of questions about it. But isn't it interesting that being a believer and believing that God is a healing God, that when we get sick or something happens to us, the first thing we do is we want to call the doctor. The truth is there's only one physician, and that's the great physician who is God. And I think it's very interesting that they say about all these other doctors, they're practicing medicine. God doesn't practice. He knows everything perfectly about you and me. Most every person in this audience and most every person watching by national television needs to be healed physically, emotionally, or in their mind. Every time I go to the hospital, I thank God for health and healing. When I see people in a bed who cannot walk, I thank God for the ability to walk. When I see people on breathing machines, I thank God for the ability to breathe unassisted with medical devices. What a treasure it is to hold in my arms my healthy children. That is a blessing from God, and I never, never take it for granted. Every Lord's Day when we say, how many of you here feel well, and we raise our hands, it is a tribute to the God that heals our physical bodies and gives us divine heal health and healing. And I thank the Lord for that. It is a pleasure to be able to get up and physically go to work. Don't you ever complain about the about having to get up in the morning. The time may come when you can't get out of bed, period. Thank God for the ability to get up and go to work and be an expression of God's health on earth. What do you do when health fails? What do you do when the doctor says there is no hope? What do you do when you don't know what to do? And isn't it interesting knowing that he's who he is? that we first of all run to the doctor first. And then when we get desperate, then we, we go to prayer. Don't you think it ought to be the other way around? That we go to him first, and then if, not watch this, not if he can't heal us, but if he delays it for some reason, or he sends you to the doctor, then that's another whole story. Not opposed to doctors, we, we need them, God calls them. And it's interesting that uh, the Apostle Paul, as godly as he was, and the faith that he had, one of his choice companions was Dr. Luke, and was with him in prison at times. So wh where's this healing issue with us? That is, if we really and truly believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, that God is the great healer, why don't we go to him first? I want you to understand that you do what God's children have done in all ages past. We have turned to the Lord our God that heals all of our diseases. Our God is a healing God. There is no disease that is the master of him, for he is the master of winds and waves. He is the master of cancer. He is the master of heart disease. He is the master of multiple sclerosis. He is the master of the common cold. He is the master of anything that you need help and healing with today, our God heals, and don't ever forget it. And he said, if thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and all to his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Notice in that text, God controls disease. He said, I will not put these diseases on you that I brought upon the Egyptians. I am the Lord 
that healeth thee. Say that with me. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let us see in the Word of God the power to heal through the Word and by faith released through the expectation of miracles. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it. And all of God's children said, Praise the Lord. But God is still in the healing business and He's still in the miracle working business. And He does it according to His will and in His perfect timing. Now in this message, I want us to see what the Bible says about healing. The scripture says, Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his maids so that they bore children. For the Lord had closed fast all the wombs of the household of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abram's wife. You remember that little incident where he said, well, no, she's my sister. The truth is she is his half sister. And so the Bible says that God healed him. If you look in the 23rd chapter of Exodus for a moment, he says, but you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and I will remove sickness from your midst. They've been going through a difficult time because of their sin and God says, I will remove sickness from your midst. He was in the process of healing them. And remember in the Old Testament, usually they always uh, recognized sickness, but they recognize it as a result primarily of sin. So you'll see that, that relationship all through the Old Testament, that their idea of sin, part of the problem was that there was sickness that usually went along with it. When God wanted to heal them, he sent his word of truth to remind them of who he was, Jehovah God, and the process of believing him, God began to heal them. He didn't just send out some word and they got healed. It was the result of believing his word that brought about healing. Let me initially say that the Bible is the greatest manuscript of miracles ever written. If you take the miracles from the pages of this book, all that you have is an empty, sterile, lifeless manuscript. I hold in my hand the most powerful document ever written as authentication of the fact that miracles are far today. I believe in miracles because I believe the Word of God. Having said that, let me hurry to say that miracles are not the byproduct of emotion. Miracles are the byproduct of meeting God's condition. Many people feel in a time of crisis that if they wring their hands enough and beg God intently enough or crawl down the aisle of a cathedral, God will hear their prayer. Wrong. God does not respond because you're upset. God responds when you meet his spiritual conditions for miracles to happen. There's real disease. I mean, the devil's alive and well on planet Earth. And, you know, if you don't get what you ask for, then you trust God to take you through. And miracles and healings are different. You know, if we somebody gets a miracle, it's like, but healings take time. And I believe sometimes you have to cooperate with those healings. So I just want to tell you that I believe that you can experience the healing power of God in your life. And I don't care if you've prayed a thousand times before, we're going to pray today and we're going to believe God that every day you're going to get better and better in every way. But I'm also going to pray that God will show you anything that you need to do. So it's not just about trusting God, but it's having our hearts open to now, Lord, is there something that you want me to do that will really make a difference in my life? 